السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته محاضرة اليوم بعنوان Intra Partum Fetal Assessment Fetal Assessment in Labor Pathophysiology A healthy term fetus is usually able to withstand the demand of a normal labor However, with each contraction, placental blood flow and oxygen transfer are temporarily interrupted and a fetus that is compromised before labor starts will become increasingly so. Insufficient oxygen delivery to the fetus causes a switch from aerobic to non-aerobic metabolism and results in the generation of lactic acid and hydrogen ions. In excess, these saturate the buffering systems of the fetus and cause a metabolic acidosis which, if prolonged and severe, can cause neuronal damage and permanent neurological injury, even intrapartum fetal death. Hypoxia and acidosis cause a characteristic change in the fetal heart rate pattern, which can be detected by auscultation and the CTG. Meconium, which is the fetal stool, is often passed by healthy fetus at or after term as a result of maturation of the gastrointestinal tract. In this scenario, it is usually thin and very dark green or brown in color. However, it may also be expelled from a fetus exposed to a marked intrauterine hypoxia or acidosis. In this scenario, it is often thicker and much brighter green in color. Fetal assessment options in labor. Number one, inspection of amniotic fluid. If there is a fresh meconium staining or absence of fluid and heavy blood stained fluid or bleeding are markers of potential fetal compromise. Number two, intermittent auscultation of the fetal heart using a pinard steth stethoscope or handled Doppler ultrasound. Number three, continuous external electronic fetal monitoring, EFM, using a CTG. Number four, continuous internal electronic fetal monitoring using a fetal scalp electrode and CTG also. The fetal heart rate is auscultated with a pinard stethoscope or by using handled Doppler device early on the initial assessment. Should be listened, it should be listened for at least one minute immediately after a contraction. This is very important. Immediately after contraction. This should be repeated every 15 minutes during the first stage of labor and at least every five minutes in the second stage of labor this is very important this is very important it should be licensed for at least one minute immediately after contraction and repeated every 15 minutes during the first stage and every five minutes in the second stage what is the indications for continuous fetal heart rate monitoring? Number one, significant meconium stain, staining of the amniotic fluid. Number two, abnormal fetal heart rate pattern detected by intermittent auscultation. Number three, maternal pyrexia, temperature equal or more than 38 or equal or more than 37.5 on two occasions. Number four, fresh vaginal bleeding. Number five, augmentation of contraction with oxytocin infusion. Number six, maternal request. Assessment of fetal well-being features of normal fetal heart rate pattern include First, we look to the baseline heart rate. It is between 110 and 150 beats per minute. This is the normal range, between 110 and 150 beats per minute. 
higher rates are defined as fetal tachycardia and lower rates as fetal bradycardia. Fetal tachycardia it can be associated with maternal or fetal infection, acute fetal hypoxia, fetal anemia, and drugs such as adrenal receptor agonist, for example, ritodrine. Number two, variability of between 5 and 25 beats per minute. That is the variation in the fetal heart rate above and below the baseline. Baseline variability is considered abnormal when it is less than 10 beats per minute. As well, a gestational age baseline variability is modified by fetal sleep states and activity and also by hypoxia, fetal infection, and the drugs suppressing the fetal central nervous system, such as opioid and hypnotics, all of which reduce the baseline variability. Number three, accelerations. These are increased in the baseline fetal heart rate of at least 15 beats per minute, lasting for at least 15 seconds. The presence of two or more accelerations on a 20 to 30 minute antepartum fetal CTG defined as reactive trace and is indicative of a non-hypoxic fetus. That's to say they are a positive sign of fetal health. Number four, the absence of deceleration transient decrease in the fetal heart rate of 15 beats per minute or more. Here as we see, at the beginning there is absent or absent and then there is minimal less than 5. Then moderate more than 25 beats, and at least there's mark. At last, sorry, there's mark variability more than 25 beats per minute. What about the interpreting the CTG in labor? Each feature of the CTG baseline rate, variability, accelerations, and decelerations should be assessed each time at CTG and is reviewed. Each feature can be described as reassuring, non-reassuring, or abnormal. If all features are reassuring, then the CTG is classified as normal. If one feature is non-reassuring and the other three are reassuring, then the CTG is classified as suspicious. If, three, if there are two or more non-reassuring features or any, or, or any one abnormal feature, then the CTG is pathological. Here, as we see in number one, there is undetected or absent variability. In number two, there is a minimal variability less than 5 beats per minute. Number three, moderate or normal variability. Number four, mark variability more than 25 beats per minute. Number five, sinusoidal pattern. Here we see fetal heart rate pattern in relation with contraction. Paragraph A, as we see, there is early deceleration. What we mean by early deceleration? That there is when there is the peak of uterine contraction, at the peak of uterine contraction, there is, this is a mirror image of each other, and there is what? And there is? Deceleration with the peak of uterine contraction. While in paragraph B, there is a variable deceleration. 
may be start before, during, or after uterine contractions. Number C, there's a late deceleration. After uterine contraction. Late after the end of uterine contraction. This is very important. Thank you for listening.